In this video, you're going to learn how to test diodes. First, I'm going to show you how not to test diodes. Then we're going to talk about what a diode is so that we can come up with a way to test it. You'll learn two different ways to test a diode depending on what type of meter you have. Then we're going to destroy a diode so that we can see what we get on our test meter and know what a destroyed diode would show. Now, this is probably going to be the second best diode tutorial video on YouTube. Now, I could go for creating the best YouTube video, but I feel like I might be disappointed. So let's start testing diodes. Yeah, I don't think this is working. Siri, can you help me test these diodes? Sorry, I couldn't quite hear you. So yeah, my phone didn't really know what to do either. Okay, so I did eventually come up with a way to measure a diode, but it wasn't what I was looking for. And I felt like I was getting close here, but I needed to think about this a bit more. So I thought maybe if I understood what a diode is, that might help me actually test it. Okay, so I heard that a diode is sort of like a valve in electronics. So it allows electricity to flow in one direction, but not the other. So when we go to test diodes, we should probably test them in both directions. The direction it's supposed to work in and flow and the direction that electricity is not supposed to flow in. So why is that? Well, a diode consists of a p-type semiconductor which has excess positive charges and it also has an n-type semiconductor. The n-type semiconductor of course consists of net negative charges. Okay, cool. So in the middle we have this thing where we have charges coming together and in fact those charges combine and so there's not very many charge carriers and so we call this a depletion region. So it's kind of hard for electricity to flow in this depletion region. And the reason a diode acts like a valve is because of this depletion region. So if we can understand how the valve works, we can understand how the diode works and we can probably understand how to test it. I also know that the electrical schematic symbol for a diode looks something like this. With one part being the anode, that's the positive part, and the negative end being the cathode. I can always remember that the negative end is the cathode because cats are the most negative creatures in the world. They can look pissed doing anything. So just remember, cathode negative. Cats are negative, cathode negative. So let's get back to this idea of a depletion region. What does that practically mean? Well, it means there's some voltage drop, some voltage barrier that has to occur across this depletion region. Well, okay, maybe I can measure something that has to do with voltage, maybe. In fact, you can actually tell a lot about the material that's used in the diode by looking at what that voltage drop is in the depletion region. So for silicon, that voltage drop is usually between 0.5 and 0.8 volts. Whereas for germanium, it's about 0.2 to 0.3 volts. For LEDs, you're typically looking at getting a higher voltage drop than both silicon and germanium, but it depends on the LED. So if I have a component with two leads, there's two ways I can put it in the circuit. I can put it so that one end is on the positive and one end is on the negative of the source. So in this, first configuration, where I have the positive on top and the negative on the bottom, that's what we would call reverse bias, okay? And in that sense, without going into too much detail, that is not the normative way we would use a diode. Typically, we'd use a diode in what's called forward bias, which is pictured in the latter. Okay, so let's talk about how we can figure out what the cathode or the anode is of the diode. So I got three different types of diodes. Let's start with this one. So for this one, you can look for the white band. That white band is going to represent the negative or the cathode. So this is the cathode. This is the anode side. Let's take this one over here. Okay, let's look at this one. Oh, look, the actual electrical schematic of a diode right there. So I know that this is the cathode negative and this is the anode positive. And with the LED, Assuming you haven't trimmed the legs already, you can look for what is the shorter leg. In this case, it's this one over here. So the shorter leg represents the cathode. Now, if we were gonna wire one of these in an electrical schematic, 
in forward bias, we need to make electric connections over here. And since this is the anode side, this will need to be the positive, and then the other side would need to be the negative. All right, so negative, positive. Obviously, if I wanted to do this in reverse bias, all I would have to do is take this component out and flip it around. So I happen to have two meters on me. I have this Milwaukee here. And if I look at the dial, I don't see anything too helpful. And you know what? Get rid of it. Well, I do have this other meter over here, and this is a very uh, affordable meter. Affordable meter. Um, but believe it or not, this actually has a diode symbol on it. So that might mean I can test diodes with it. Let's see what happens. So I'm gonna turn it to the diode position and I'm gonna see what I read. Oh, okay, well let's push these probes onto the diode and I'm measuring around 700 millivolts in the forward bias position. If I turn this to reverse bias position, I'm gonna get open line. Okay, let's try another one. So here's another diode, measures a little bit different voltage, same idea. All right, let's try some light emitting diodes. Here's a green one, measures a much higher voltage. Oh, here, this yellow one even lights up. And once again, this blue one will light up too, but this time we don't even get to measure anything. The reason you don't get a reading for the blue LED gets a little technical. Needless to say, typically you will get a reading with red, yellow, and green LEDs. That's because they have lower forward working voltages. But some LEDs, such as blue, white, purple, they have higher forward voltages, usually 3 volts or more. And most meters aren't really designed to measure those in diode test mode. Okay, now if you remember our meter before, it didn't have a diode test, but you can actually test diodes using the resistance setting. So if you turn your t meter to resistance and you measure the diode in forward bias, you're going to get a, a high reading. You saw that was 0.5 mega ohms. Now if you reverse it, you should get open line. Now when you do this, you're not so much looking for an exact resistance value. You're just looking for a high resistance value in forward bias and open line in reverse bias. And that has to do with the fact that, you know, in that reverse bias situation, you're not going to get electricity to flow through that diode. Now with LEDs, the resistance measurements aren't very consistent. So you'll see we can test the LED in both forward and reverse bias, and we're not going to get any measurements. We're going to get open line for both. So let's review some key points about testing diodes. So we went over two separate ways to test diodes. One uses the diode test function on your multimeter, and that one's the best. Okay, the other way is to use resistance. So if you can use diode test mode, use that one. Now, when you're testing diodes, there's a couple of different things that can happen. All right, so you go to test a diode using the diode test mode. All right, you're going to measure a voltage, typically in millivolts. So for silicon diodes, you're looking at about 0.5 to 0.8 volts, and for germanium diodes, 0.2 to 0.3 volts. Of course, that's only going to be in forward bias mode. In reverse bias mode, you're going to measure open line in both cases. And then if you have a shorted diode, you might measure a low voltage, or if it's an LED, you're probably going to measure open line. Resistance test mode, for forward bias, you're going to measure a high resistance, a high resistance, typically between 1,000 and 10 mega ohms. For reverse bias, you're going to measure open line. Now we want to destroy a diode so that we can test it. All right, so I have this LED, and I have it connected in reverse bias. So I'm going to go ahead and attach this to the first power supply. So right now I'm applying 28 volts in reverse bias. And you may be wondering right now why I have all these power supplies stacked on top of each other. 
Now, without going into too many of the details, it's because these power supplies only go up to 28 volts, and I need a lot more than that. Okay, so this time applying about 56 voltage to the diode, and nothing seems to happen. Okay, so when I applied 84 volts to the diode, I was able to get current to flow in the reverse bias position, and this destroyed the diode. So I'm going to test this diode again, and this time I'm using a different meter, but this one has a diode testing feature to it. So I'm going to test it in both forward and reverse bias, and in both cases I'm going to measure open line. If I were to switch this meter over to resistance mode, I'm going to measure open line in both situations as well. One thing you notice is in neither situation, in either diode test mode or in resistance test mode, I, I, the LED doesn't light up at all. So I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned how to test diodes. If not, just remember, this was only meant to be the second best diode testing video.